Why does she need a sticky bottom? Welcome back to the Cruise Ship Safety and Security Channel. Ah, Hollywood where physics takes a back seat and anchors are apparently the nautical equivalent of a handbrake. Remember that scene in Battleship where the USS Missouri drops anchor and somehow Tokyo drifts through the ocean? Yeah, no, in real life that would end in tears, snap chains and a very expensive insurance claim. But don't worry, because today we're diving into how anchoring actually works, without the CGI and creative liberties. Now let's talk about how anchoring really works. This is a modern stockless anchor, aka the patent anchor, because, well, someone patented it. It's got a shank, the long bit, and flukes, the sticky out bit. But what it doesn't have is a stock, that old school crossbar you'd see on pirate ship anchors. Instead, it relies on the flukes digging into the seabed to hold the ship in place. But here's the kicker anchoring isn't just about plonking some metal on the ocean floor and calling it a day. The seabed itself is critical. Drop an anchor onto solid rock and congrats. You've just created an expensive underwater sledge. Seaweed? Even worse, it's like trying to grip onto a wet banana peel. What you really want is soft mud. Nice, sticky, ship-hugging mud. That's the anchoring equivalent of Velcro. And here's the part that uh, surprises most people. It's not actually the anchor holding the ship in place. It's the weight of the chain. Yep, that massive chunk of metal at the end is mostly there to keep the chain from wandering off. The chain lays out along the seabed, and as the ship tugs at it, the tension is absorbed bit by bit. In anchor speak, when the chain is just chilling straight down, we call it up and down. That means the ship is perfectly balanced, like a yoga master in deep meditation. If the wind or current starts pushing, the chain stretches out, moving from uh, lightweight to medium weight to heavy weight. All terms the crew uses to let the bridge know how much force is at play. Now let's talk about physics for a second. Don't worry, I promise this won't be boring. The curve the anchor chain makes is called a capnery. As the ship pulls, this curve flattens out, absorbing energy like a giant shock absorber. If a gust of wind suddenly yanks the ship, the chain gently lifts before settling back down. Without this built-in buffer, the anchor would just rip right out of the seabed, and suddenly you're not anchored anymore. You're drifting. So, how do you make sure the anchor actually does its job? Simple pay out enough chain, let out too little, and you're basically hoping for the best let out plenty and now the anchor has backup an entire length of heavy chain working to keep things steady but if the chain is doing all the hard work uh, how do you ever get the anchor back enter the ship's windlass the big burly machine up front that hauls the anchor back home the ship moves forward while the windlass heaves eventually pulling the anchor straight up at that point the flukes lift out of the mud and the anchor is away which is just a fancy sailor way of saying it's off the ground, lads. As the chain comes in, powerful jets of water wash off any clingy mud, so that's what that water gushing out near the bow is, just an anchor shower. Finally, the chain winds its way through the hawse pipe, over the windlass, down the spurling pipe, and into the chain locker where it's safely attached at the bitter end. Yes, that's actually what it's called. Ever noticed markings on an anchor chain? Those aren't just for decoration. Anchor chains are measured in shackles, each about 90 feet, 27.4 meters long. The number of shackles out is marked by white links near the red joining shackle. One white link, one shackle out. Five white links, five shackles. Easy, right? So if you see five shackles at the waterline, that means there's 137 meters of chain down there working its magic. Now, let's go back to Battleship. In reality, if you drop an anchor while moving at full speed, the best case scenario is you ruin some fish's day before the chain snaps under the force. Worst case, the anchor rips free, the chain slams into the ship and you've got a whole new problem to deal with. What actually happens when an anchor is paid out? Well, if it catches, the chain gradually stretches, absorbing energy. If not, it just skips along the seabed like a flat stone on a lake. Not quite the dramatic handbrake turn Hollywood promised, huh? And that's a wrap on today's deep dive into anchoring. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You now know more about anchoring than the people who wrote Battleship. So if you like ships, bad jokes, and debunking Hollywood nonsense, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications.
Until next time, keep your chains long and your anchors buried. Cheers.